create a pattern. This is the tomato cage that I used. I got this one at Lowe's um, over the summertime and I like this cage because it goes from this ring here up to the top at 16 inches. It has a nice long peak on the top for your gnome hat. There are other ones out there where the rings are spread out further and there's not as much of a space between here and there and you could probably use it but you're going to end up having a dome-shaped cap. So you want to get this one. This, by the way, is a 32-inch tomato cage. This is a smaller of the tomato cages. So a 32-inch tomato cage with a 16-inch um, top on it is what I'm using. And to make the pattern, it's not that difficult to do. You're going to just take paper and wrap it around it and then cut it. Now, I've simplified that even more, and I'll show you how I did it using Christmas paper. Christmas paper is great because a lot of times when you buy these big sheets, it's marked out in inch blocks. So this is what I'm going to show you on. This is half of the tomato cage after I wrapped it up and I cut it. So what you're going to do is on your straight edge, this will be your center fold when you cut out your pad, you cut out your fabric. This should be 35 inches from point to point. And I know that my camera is not big enough to show you that, but it goes 35 inches along this fold, folded edge. On the bottom, from this point to this point, it's 19 and 3 quarters inches. And in the center, there's a one and a quarter inch bow. So if you find center, mark down one and a quarter inches, and then just draw an arc over that, and you'll get your bottom edge. For this edge, there's you cannot. It's not straight um, because when you pull those points together, it, it does curve that back seam. So this seam is 35 and a half inches. It's a half inch wider and it does have a slight curve in it so my suggestion to you is to cut out your 35 inches this way cut it maybe 25 inches this way or 20 inches this way and then cut up to your point leaving you a couple of inches on your paper and then wrap that around your tomato cage and find out exactly how this one's going to fit the tomato cage that you purchased all tomato cages are different. I have learned that the hard way. Depending on where you buy them, they're all shaped just a little bit different. So that's how I would do it. Now the next piece is the hat on your gnome. And, oops, I haven't got it all the way cut out yet. Let me find my scissors and I will cut it. All I did was I laid this on here again this here is my folded edge, okay? And then I just cut or drew on a curve. I like the hats that kind of come down over the gnome's ears, so to speak, instead of just wrapping straight around. This just gives it a little more character. And so there it is. This fits right in there like that. Um, probably can't see my edge. But then I just cut a curve on it, and that's how I got my hat. And now to get the hat brim, all I did was lay a piece of paper on here. I put my fold up here, and I traced my bottom edge, and then I added two and a half inches all the way around it, and that gave me my upper edge. And that's my fur piece for around my hat. 
So just trace the edge of your hat however you choose to do it. Measure up two and a half inches all the way across and then make your line and that's how you get your fur. The nose pattern piece, um, I cut this out of t-shirt net and this is just a four inch diameter circle. It's a little bit over but it's close enough. Four, and eight, four inch diameter circle um, and that's what you're going to cut your nose out of. And the arm, you have two choices. Um, this is a pattern piece that I did. Get out of the Christmas paper. <coughs> oh, excuse me, my voice is a little creaky today. And it's about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, if you want to count up to here. Inches that way, and it's about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine inches going this way. And then just put a couple of curves on it. And you need to have this curve match up with your mitten pattern, which is right here. So make sure that these edges are equal in size so that when you put your mitten on, they will line up. And for the mitten, just cut out a mitten shape. This is four inches by four inches, pretty much. Just cut out a mitten shape and you'll have your mitten. The other option is you can just get a sock. Um, these actually I got at the Dollar Tree. I got lucky when I went in there and they had these hanging out. And if you look and you put this right on the heel, you can just cut off the top here and cut off the bottom there and you could use a sock for an arm. Up to you. I'm using the fabric today, but this is an option if you choose to do it that way. All right, once you've got your pattern pieces done, and you're going to lay them out on your fabric, obviously, and you're going to cut them out. Now, um, for the base, this is, let me get it out here. This is Herculon. It's a very heavy um, embroidery fa or, um, upholstery fabric, and this works great. It stands up nice. Um, it holds its shape well. The wires on the tomato cage do not poke, do not show through when I use this really heavy fabric. If you don't want to use this and you want to use something lighter weight, then what I really recommend is that you line it with some type of interfacing. Um, there's a choice if you want to for cheap interfacing that works really, really well. And this here is just, it's called Lawnscape Fabric. And this is what you lay down in your gardens before you plant your flowers so the weeds don't come through. But it has the same consistency as a heavyweight interfacing. And you get 300 feet for $20. So that's a pretty good deal if you want to line your body piece. I really recommend using upholstery fabric if you go in and you can buy remnants. There's lots of different colors that you can pick from. Um, it, it just holds up a lot better. And you only need a yard of it. So it's not going to be really, really expensive. For the hat, I cut this out of flannel. It's a little wrinkly, but I cut it out of flannel. Um, I cut the mittens out of flannel, and I cut the arms out of the Herculon. So cut them out, and you know, pretty basic how to sew it together. You're just going to sew up your back seam on this, and sew up your back seam on that. And that's all there is to do to that. We're going to so the body's done. And the hat's almost done. We just have to put the fur on it. So that's pretty easy. So let me show you the arms. I'll get these pattern pieces out of the way. I do the arms in a sequence. Let me get all the pieces over here and show you how I do these. Okay, so the first thing that I do is, where's my first one? Here it is. I stitch up the back seam here on the arm, and then I stitch up the mitten, but I only go up about two or three inches. And then I turn it this way, and I line up my seams, and I sew my hand across. Once I've done that, then I turn it right side or wrong sides together, right sides together. And and I'm a real bugaboo about thread color, so you can see I switched my threads. I sew up the inner seam on the arm, and then I sew around the rest of my mitten. And that's what I get. And then before you turn it, 
you want to clip down into the thumb. You want to clip into the elbow here, especially on this heavy fabric. And you want to clip the back elbow as well. And now to turn the thumb, I use hemostats. Um, you can do this however it works best for you, but I just go up inside. I find my thumb. I push it down inside my hemostats. If I can get them, don't, there we go, to open up. I pinch it, and then I just wiggle it down in. And there it is. My thumb is turned. All right, and then I just grab a hold of the hand at the top and I pull that through. Now again, with this heavy fabric, it takes a little more work to get it out. There it is, it's all turned. There's my thumb, it's pulled out. And I can just work on it a little bit more. Push it out the rest of the way. Okay. There, there's my arm stitched up and turned. All right, and that's, again, what it looks like stitched and turned. Then I stuff it. Make sure you get enough stuffing in the thumb. Stuff the hand, and you're only gonna stuff up to about here, and then you're gonna stop, and you're actually gonna run a stitch line across here. This one's already stuffed and stitched, because this is the part we're gonna glue onto the gnome, and you want the arm to be flexible. So only leave about two inches at the top and stitch across your arm. And that's all you need to do. Then run a stitch run a stitch across the top as well. I haven't done that yet, but I will. Stitch across the top. And that's how you make the arm. Now the hat. We'll finish up on the hat. Take your hat, and again, you're going to stitch your inside, your back seam, which I've already done. You're going to take, oh, the fur. The fur that I used, I get it, guess at the Dollar Tree. And this is called a super soft microfiber cloth, and they use it to polish cars, and it's a buck. So you can go to the dollar store and get this. And you can get about two uh, hat pieces out of one. So it's a pretty good value. If you've got fur around the house, then just use your fur. But this is what I'm using on this particular gnome. You're going to cut out that fur piece that you made the pattern for. You're also going to notice, too, that depending on when you go to the Dollar Tree, sometimes it's white, sometimes it's off-white. So be aware of that. This one's off-white. You're going to take your fur, and you are going to stitch up the back seam, and then you are going to put the right side of your fur, this is confusing, the right side of your fur to the wrong side of the hat. Right side of fur, wrong side of hat. And you're going to pin it. And pin it in there and then stitch it on. Make sure you get the right edge, which I did not do. I got to turn this around. So be sure you get the right edge. <laughs> That's important. Right side of fur, wrong side of hat. Pin it, and then you are going to just continue to pin it all the way around. On the wrong side of your hat, like that. So wrong, wrong side of fur, right, or right, wrong side of hat, right side of fur. And after you've stitched it on, 
this is what you'll have. Right here, this is the white one now. That was the off-white one. This is what you'll have. And then when you flip it over, your seams are all finished along the edge of the hat. And the fur, as you can see, is now on the right side. So there's no need to finish those seams. It's all on the inside. And then when I put it on my gnome, all I'm going to do is get this up so the red doesn't show. And I'm just going to put a light bead of hot glue along the edge to hold that from flopping down. Just stitched it on there. And that's all there is to making the hat. All right. Pretty simple. Now to make the nose. The nose is the last piece. You're going to cut that four inch circle out of t-shirt net. You're going to run a hand gather stitch around the outside edge. And then you're going to take a bunch of polyfill. And you are going to, you want to fill it tight. You want it really full. Get a handful of it. I'm using t-shirt net because it's available and it's easy to get. This is actually, a, you could use old t-shirts. You don't even have to buy a new one. You can just go to your drawer or someone in your family's drawer and pull out one that's not looking so good and use that. If you do, then you will definitely have to paint it because it may be stained. But you don't have to buy a new t-shirt or buy t-shirt fabric just to do this nose. Now I use dual duty thread. It's a very heavy thread. Let me see if I can get this in here. And I've got a spool over here that's in green because the white one doesn't have a label anymore. But it's duo duty thread. Comes in all colors. I have every color there is because I use this a lot. And you're going to pull the, your gather lines up tight. And then you're just going to take a couple of little stitches and knot this off. Okay, make sure you get enough from in there. The worst thing in the world is when you start playing around with this and the stitching lets go and you got to start all over again. All right, so I'm just going to cut off that thread and it's really not puffy enough. I'm not real happy with it. So again, with my hemostats, I use hemostats a lot. Just go into the nose and dig a hole in the center and start stuffing this in there until you get it nice and full. This is a pretty big nose too. I like big noses on my gnomes. So this is a very large nose. If you don't like it this big, just cut it a little smaller. Don't have to have it this big. And just keep pushing it in there evenly all around. Spread it around. Try to get as many of those wrinkles, at least off the front, as you can. Okay, that's pretty good. Now, you have two choices. You can either leave it like this and then take your a blusher and you can put a lot of blush on it until you get it nice and pink, which I've done. It's, you know, you can do it that way. Or you can paint it and then let it dry. You will have to sand it if you paint it. And all I used for this was ceram coat. Uh, craft paint and this is just a flesh color and then you're going to do the same thing once you've painted it take your blusher and just start blushing it until you get it nice and pink he's outdoors a lot you want your little gnome to have a nice rosy nose so it takes a lot just keep working it until you get it nice and pink and rosy
okay? So those are your two options for your nose. And this one here, I must have pulled my gathers. These are both from the same t-shirt, and I used the um, same stitching soap. And I'm not quite sure why one came out smaller than the other, but I, t I think I pulled this one tighter than I did this one. But anyway, there's your nose, so you can do it either way. If you like the fleshier color, then paint it. If you just like it really, really pink, then put a lot of blush on it, and it'll look like that. That's the nose. Not that complicated. Now, the beard. The beard, I just bought a mop um, at the Dollar Tree. It's a buck. And you can actually get two gnomes out of this. But what you have to do when you get it is you have to somehow or another cut these two little knobs off right here. And I just used a hacksaw. You just hacksaw through this. It's not that hard to get through it. And I think that's far enough. And when you do, a little more. There we go. It just let go. The uh, inside prong breaks off and you can remove the strands of yarn from this, this cap. And like I say, for a dollar, you have enough here to do two gnomes. That's a lot of um, strands. You will not be able to find yarn this inexpensively. Uh, and this really makes a great uh, beard for your gnome. So that's how you do it. And once you get it out, then you're gonna take it to your sewing machine you're going to lay your strands out evenly, even them up, and I'm going to go to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew, show you how I sew the beard together. So go watch my video on that and then come on back. Okay, we're going to make the beard. And now that you've freed your strands from that plastic container that you that the mop came in, uh, you need to stitch your, your strands together. And if you don't want to use a mop, you can use white bulky knit yarn, um, cut them 20 inch strands. And I'm not quite sure how many you'll need because I've not done it that way, but probably the entire skein would, would be advisable. Then you're going to take your skein and you're going to find center and you're going to put your white thread on your sewing machine. And what you're going to do is you're going to just put a couple of strands of yarn or the mop underneath the needle in the middle. And you're going to start stitching. I've got four strands here underneath. And I'm just going to start stitching those four strands together. And then I'm going to shove a couple more up underneath it and stitch those together. And then a couple more. And I'm going to keep doing this all the way across my mop. Make sure you stay in the center of your strands. And make sure they stay flat and don't crisscross. It's a lot easier if they're not all crisscrossed. When you get to the end, sew off the end, and then you're going to pick up the whole thing, and you're going to turn it around. You're going to move over about a half an inch, and you're going to sew back down a second time, half inch away from that first seam. Again, keeping them flat, just stitch straight down over that seam or next to that seam, I'm sorry. And 
that's all there is to it. Now you've made the beard. And the other thing, two other things that you need before you can start assembling this is you need skis. And I found the perfect thing to use for skis. I'm gonna move this out of the way. These are paint sticks for the five gallon pails. They're free. How can you beat that? They're free. Just go to your home um, depot or home, uh, home Depot or Lowe's and ask them. They gave me a handful of these for nothing. And you will have to cut them. But what you're going to do is you are going to use this already natural curve in here. You're going to find center on your stick and you're just going to follow that curve that's already there and you're just going to curve this up and then you are going to curve it down and once again you're going to take that little hacksaw and you're going to cut that out just cut the top off and then take a little sandpaper and smooth it off pretty simple this cuts really easy it's thin um, it's not that strong a wood, so it cuts pretty easy. Then once you get it cut out and sanded, you're just going to put a couple of coats of paint on it. Now, I did mine in red. You can use any color you choose. I just chose the red. I thought it was nice and Christmassy, and that's the color that I wanted for my skis. When you get them done, then you're just going to crisscross them like so, put a little glue on there, and throw on some decorations, which we will do later. That's it for the skis. I love my Home Depot store and the Dollar Tree. For the ski poles, what you need are two quarter inch dowels, cut 14 inches long. And to get the point on them, I just stick them in my pencil sharpener and it sharpens them right up. Um, the problem is now with the quarter inch is that there's really the hole. These are the two, these are faucet things which you can also get at Lowe's. I actually got these off Amazon. Um, they're the outside faucet handles and they're perfect. They're red. They look like ski pole thingies and you can just attach them or use these for your ski poles. But like I say, the quarter inch is just a hair bit too big. So I went up about an inch and a half and there I just slightly shaved off the top of my dowel down to the bottom there so, uh, so that I could then get this to fit on and it's still a tight fit I want it to be tight <laughs> and there you have a ski pole I will put some hot glue in there to make sure that it does not come off so 14 inch quarter inch dowels two water faucet handles pencil sharpener little paint ski poles how easy can it get and again when I put these together I'm going to tie a ribbon around them and put them in my gnome's hand. But with those for ski poles and these for skis, it's just the darn cutest thing you ever did see. All right, are you ready to put your gnome together? Because that's what we're gonna do next. All righty, now it's time to put our little gnome together. We have all of our parts finished. It's just time to assemble them. This is the fun part. You're obviously gonna need some hot glue and as you can see on my tomato cage, I duct taped my points together so that the body slides on a little bit easier. And here's my body. On this heavy fabric, I did not stitch the top shut because it's really hard to turn it out. So I just left it open. It's not gonna show anyway, but in case you're wondering why that's not stitched, that's the reason why I need to get in a little bit closer here to do this. You're just going to put your body cover on. And right now he's covered with all that white fuzzy stuff from the fur on his hat. Okay, it should fit fairly snug. It doesn't have to be super tight, but it fits, should fit fairly snug. And the one thing you want to be aware of is that here's a wire right here. And here's my back seam. What I want is I want a wire in the front. So I'm going to turn this just a little bit. 
All right, now my wire, my wire's here, my back seam is here, so they're across from each other when I put my cover on. Now I'm just gonna, like I say, this stuff is collecting all kinds of crazy stuff. I'm gonna flip this over to the side like this. I'm gonna pull it down tight. And I'm just gonna start gluing it. A little hot glue on the edge. I'm gonna pull it. Now you don't wanna to push too tight, otherwise the glue will seep through your fabric and then you get this dark spot on there. So just press it just enough to get it to hold, which it's not doing, just to get it to hold. There we go, now it's got it. All right, now we're just gonna glue the whole thing on all the way around. All right, I have my bottom all glued around. So his basic cover is on. So the next thing I'm gonna do is put on his hat. And you wanna put the back in the back, obviously. And again, making sure that the center of the hat lines up with this bar right here, because that's where you're gonna put your nose. Okay, now take your nose and you're gonna lift this up and right on that bar, you're gonna glue your nose right there underneath that, the hat band. You want it under the hat band. Don't glue down the hat just yet, just get the nose on. Because now you're gonna take your beard and what I did was, remember we put those two rows of stitching on it? I just cut down through the center of those two rows of stitching, giving me one beard. And this is actually a lot of beard. So you don't even need that much. But I like a nice full beard. So you can fold it in half which is what I'm gonna do. And you put it underneath his nose and then up around and underneath the hat. You wanna get that stitching up underneath the nose so that you can't see it. 
So I'm going to lift it up a little bit. I'm going to put some glue up in there. I'm going to find center. And I'm going to push this up underneath his nose like that. And then I'm going to put more glue on there. Go around the nose and under the hat. And make sure both pieces get glued on. Right now I think I've got the back one glued on pretty good, but I don't have the front one glued on yet. Remember I folded this in half. So I'm going to put another row of glue on there and push that other half up underneath to cover up the stitching. Get it right up underneath there, real nice. Okay, just like that. And now you can glue down the rest of your hat. Put it over the top of your hair, your beard, and then just put a bead of glue on there and start sticking it down. And make sure that you pull it so that the white is covering. You don't see any of the red on that seam. See here in the back, I can still see the red. I don't wanna see the red. I wanna pull this down like that so that all I see is the white. And you can see how this bumps out here. It shows up a little bit with the upholstery fabric. It shows up a lot if you use a uh, lightweight cotton to do this with. So I'm just gonna put some glue on there and I'm gonna pull this down and stick it on. And a little bit more up over here on this side. And then you can put a little bit up here just to hold these corners down because they tend to want to flop around. And there he is from the front. All right, now you're going to take your arms. And what you're going to do is you're going to figure out, oh, I forgot, I made a mistake here. Hold on. The arms have to go up underneath the hat. So I'm just going to peel that off. Okay, so we're going to put our arms up underneath the hat. Right there's one, and I'm just going to put some glue on here. Sorry about that. I got ahead of myself. All right, now I can glue down the, the hat. Over the top of the arm, so that covers the arm seam. All right, and you're gonna turn around and you're gonna do the same thing on this side. And if I can peel this off, I will. Make sure you get them on even. 
you want them even, you know, obviously, for obvious reasons. So this is where I want it. And now I can glue that hat down. Okay, there he is all put together. Now, what I do is I take my beard and I untwist it and I peel it apart. Four strands. I do this with the entire beard. which I'm not going to do on tape. You can figure out how to do this. Untwist it, it gives them a nice curly beard. Okay? Like that. And for the finishing touches, there's the ski poles. I hot glued the faucet handles on the bottom. This, all of this greenery stuff came from the Dollar Tree. And I just tie a little ribbon on it. And there are his ski poles, which you can glue into his hands if you choose to. And his ski poles, or his skis, I mean, I'm sorry, are here again. Dollar Tree greenery. And last but not least, I'm just going to put a little sprig of green up here on his hat. And then the last thing that I do when I get these all untwisted is I put two braids in on either side and tie a red ribbon around them. And again, from the Dollar Tree, you can purchase these battery operated lights. This one I got at Halloween, so they're just white lights. But the one in the background, you can see, I'll move him forward. Okay, the one that was in the background, I just moved him forward. And the lights that are on him, again, came from the Dollar Tree. And those I got at Christmas time, and they're little Christmas balls, which is really cute. And all I did was, when I, here's the battery pack, I just slid it underneath his beard so that you can't see it when you turn them on. And I braided some of the mop and tied bows on it. And I put jingle bells on, on this one. But otherwise, they're both the same. Oh, the other thing I wanted to point out, too, is that the nose on this one was just a t-shirt with the white blush. The nose on this one, I painted flesh and then blushed it. So you can see the difference between the two and make up your mind which way you would like to do your gnome. And I would love to see it when you get yours finished. If you would like to send me a picture, that would be great. And I'd also love it if you would subscribe to my channel because that just helps me, encourages me to make more um, crafts and send them out to you. And again, this whole thing was very inexpensive. Most of the stuff came from the Dollar Tree. Um, some of the stuff was just fabric that I already had here. But you can make this little guy for $10, maybe. I don't think you have to spend much more than that. And he's just so cute. So have a very merry... I hope you all make one, and please subscribe to my channel, and thank you for watching.